Hi everyone, welcome to the fifth episode of this procedural cave generation series. So uh, just flipping through a couple of caves, we can see that one of the problems we're having is uh, these sort of small isolated wall tiles, which are really too small to be warranted, so we want to remove those. And then in denser maps, we're getting lots of isolated rooms, uh, the smaller of which we probably just want to fill in with wall tiles, and the rest we'll obviously want to interconnect with uh, passageways. Now, the approach that we're going to be using to detect different regions of our map is essentially the same as a uh, paint application would use to fill in a certain area, which is using what is known as a flood fill algorithm. Okay, so say for example we're trying to get a list of all of the tiles in this little room over here. Um, we'd start by getting a known tile and giving that to our flood fill algorithm. The algorithm would then uh, add this tile to a queue and it would start a loop. So inside of the loop, uh, the algorithm will get the first tile out of the queue, and it will add that tile to a list of room tiles. Then it will look at each of the four adjacent tiles, and provided that they're the same type of tile as the initial tile, they'll each be added to the queue. And that's really all that needs to happen uh, for the flood flow algorithm to work. As you can imagine, in the next iteration, the first tile will be retrieved from the queue, and uh, added to the list of room tiles, and we'll then look at each of its adjacent tiles, which haven't already been looked at, and add those to the queue. And after a bunch of repetitions, we'll have a list of every tile in the room. So yeah, it's a pretty simple algorithm, and uh, we can get down to programming it right now. All right, so let's go into the map generator script. And uh, the first thing we're gonna to want to think about is how we're going to actually store a tile now, since our map is uh, stored as a 2D array of integers, I think it would make the most sense to store a tile as two integers telling us where in the map the tile is located. So let's create a little struct, which we can call, say, coord for coordinate. And this will have a public int, we can call it tile x, and a public int tile y. And we can create a little constructor, which takes an int x and int y, and then you can just set tile x equal to x, and of course tile y equal to y. And uh, now let us, first of all, say using systems.collections.generic, since we want to be able to use lists, and uh, let's find somewhere in our class to put a new method. Um, and we'll have this method return a list of coordinates. And we can call this method something, this will be our flood fill method, by the way, we can call this something like get region tiles. And uh, for parameters, we'll take in two integers, a start x and a start y. All right, so first of all, we're going to want to create a list of coordinates to store our tiles in. I'll just set this equal to a new list of coordinates. Next, we want some uh, easy way to determine which tiles we've already looked at. So we'll basically create a new map, a new 2D integer array, where noughts and ones, instead of representing empty spaces and walls, will rather represent uh, whether or not the tile has been looked at. So we can create a 2D integer array called something like map flags this is equal to a new 2D integer array with a size of width by height. And then we also want to know what type of tile we're dealing with, whether it's a wall tile, in other words, a one, or an empty space tile, a zero. So uh, this will be called tile type. And we can just set this equal to whatever type of tile is stored in our map at start x and start y. Next up, we're going to want to create that queue, and uh, this will store coordinates. We can just call this queue, and it's equal to a new queue of coordinates. And we want to add to this queue by saying queue.nq. We want to add a new coordinate, our starting coordinates. We'll just say new coord, start x, and start y. All right, finally, we'll just want to set the map flags at start x and start y to 1 to show that we've now looked at that tile. Okay, so next we're going to want to enter that loop. We'll say while 
uh, queue.count is greater than zero. In other words, while there's still stuff left in the queue, we're going to want to get our first tile. So code tile is equal to queue.dq, which uh, obviously returns the first item in the queue, as well as actually removing the item from the queue. So we don't have to do that as well. And we're going to want to add this to the tiles list. So tiles.add the new tile. And then we want to look at all of the adjacent tiles. So let us do a little for loop. You can say for int x starting at uh, the tiles tile x minus 1 and going to x less than or equal to tile dot tile x plus 1. And of course we want to increase x. And can just copy this, paste it in, and press command R to change that x to a y. And now, the first thing we want to do is to make sure that this adjacent tile actually lies within the map. Um, since, of course, if tile x is equal to, say, 0, and we start at 0 minus 1, then that's going to be outside of the map. So um, we, we're actually doing this sort of check already in, uh, I believe it's the get surrounding wall count method. Um, you can see over here we're checking if it's uh, if the neighbor x is greater than or equal to 0 and less than width and all of that. So let's actually create a little method, since this seems to be fairly common functionality. And just a method that returns a bool, and uh, we can call this is in map range, takes in an integer x and an integer y, and it can just return, um, can return x is greater than or equal to zero, and x is less than the width, and y is also greater than or equal to zero, and y is less than the height. All right, so now if you felt so inclined, you could go to the get surrounding wall count and replace uh, this line of code here with is in map range neighbor x and neighbor y. And certainly in our get region tiles, we can say if is in map range, pass in the x and the y. Um, also, at the moment, this is obviously looking at the uh, all of the eight surrounding tiles, but we only really want to look at the ones that aren't diagonal. So um, we can say and um, if the if x is equal to tile x or y is equal to tile y, then uh, that means either the x or the y is in the center. So it's not a diagonal. So we can uh, just add that bit of logic in. Say and y is equal to tile dot tile y or x is equal to tile dot tile x, close bracket. All right, so the next thing we would want to check is uh, our map flags. Make sure we haven't looked at this tile yet. So if map flags x, y is equal to zero, and we also want to make sure, of course, that it's the right type of tile. So we'll say and map x, y, is equal to the tile type, then we can say map flags x, oops, hit the wrong thing, x, y is equal to 1, to say that we've now looked at this tile, and finally q.nq, we're adding the new coordinate at x, y. Okay, so all that remains to do in this method is, of course, to actually return a list of coordinates. So right at the end, we can just say return our tiles list. All right, so the next thing that we want to do is to create a method which, given a certain tile type, can return all of the regions uh, of that type of tile. So we basically want to return a list of regions. So its return type will not be a list of coordinates, but rather a list of list of coordinates. And we can get we can call this uh, get regions, and this takes in an integer tile type. And here we're of course going to want to make a uh, list of list of coordinates, which we can call our regions equal to a new list of list of coordinates. And once again, we're going to want to uh, have a map flags variable. So we can just copy that in. And we're going to want to do a for loop. 
Um, let's find a nice for loop to copy. I hate writing out for loops. Let's grab this one. This is exactly what we want. Um, basically just x equal naught, x less than width, x plus plus, and same story for y with height. And uh, so we're going through every, uh, every part of the map, and we'll say if map flags for x and y is equal to zero, and uh, the tile at x and y is of the right type, so it's equal to tile type, then we're going to want to create a new list of coordinates, which we can call something, I guess we can call it our new region, and this will be equal to get region tiles, and we'll pass in x and y as the uh, starting values. And then once we've got that, we want to add that to our list of regions. So regions.add the new region. And then we also want to mark all of the tiles in the new region as looked at. So we want to mark those all in our map flags. So we can say for each coordinate, um, we can just call this uh, tile in the new region. We want to mark the map flags at tile dot tile x and tile dot tile y as looked at. All right, and then at the end, we'll just return our list of regions. Okay, so what we can do now is we can create a void, and I'm just going to call this um, process map, for want of a better name. Um, might rename that later, it's not a super descriptive title. But what this method is going to do is it's going to start off by getting a list of list of coordinates, which we can call our wall regions. This will be equal to get regions, and we'll pass in one as the type of region that we want to get, one obviously standing for the wall. And uh, let's create an integer wall threshold size. So we set this equal to 50. So what that means is that any wall region that is made up of less than 50 tiles, we're going to remove from the map. So we can say uh, for each list of coordinates wall region in wall regions, if wall region dot count is less than the wall threshold size, then we basically want to go through every tile net in that wall region. So we can do another for each coord tile in wall region. And we can go map tile dot tile x and tile dot tile y is equal to zero. So we're just uh, setting it to a uh, to an empty space. So let's save that. And uh, before we actually call process map, um, we want to call it from the generate map method. Let us uh, just press play here, and I want to find. Um, okay, actually the starting one is good with a seed of zero. Um, we'll test it out on this map so we can see that this has got a bunch of small uh, wall regions, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I want to delete all of these. Um, I'm guessing these are all less than 50 tiles, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, so let's call from generate new map. Um, we want to do this before we do all of our border stuff. So we can just call process map. Oops, process map. Let's run this. Whoa, that was very destructive. Okay, there's definitely a, definitely I've made an error somewhere. All right, so the problem was in the get region tiles method where um, I was quite happily copying the for loop. Uh, I had the X and then I copied it and I renamed the X to a Y. But um, what I forgot to do, of course, was to change tile.tilex to tile.tileY in both instances here. So, um, yeah, it wasn't finding the correct tiles. So now, if we run that, you can see that uh, these little groups of walls that uh, were there before are now gone. And if we were to up the size, 
um, the threshold size that is, say I up that to 200. Now we could uh, go here and we can see even those uh, other bigger groups are gone. And of course we could do the same thing if we want to remove uh, rooms that are below a certain threshold size. Um, let's copy this over here, paste. We can rename wall regions to room regions. We want to get regions of a tile type of zero. And instead of wall threshold size, we'll of course have a room threshold size. Oops, I missed a D. And we'll rename wall region to room region. And uh, finally, we want to fill in the rooms that we're removing with wall tiles. We'll change that to a one. All right, so let's, uh, let's set the threshold size to zero. And let me turn up the random fill percent to try and get a, a cavern with a whole bunch of little rooms. So we've got one here. Um, let's just make sure this is working. We can focus on these two rooms over here maybe. Um, set this up to 50. And we can see those two rooms have disappeared along with a bunch over here and maybe there's one down here. I don't really remember. But um, yeah, so now we've got uh, control over the sort of size of the features that appear in our, in our caverns. And uh, in the next episode, we'll be looking at how to take all of these rooms, uh, the remaining ones, and connect them all up with passages so that uh, from any one uh, room, you can get to all of the others. All right, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Cheers.